As you can see, I'm a tennis player, and one thing I've always been curious about is how fast my serve is. It's not like the pros where they just have measurements every single time, and it tells you how fast your serve went. In high school, there's pretty much nothing like that around, but luckily, with the help of physics, we can find how fast my tennis serve is. We will use um, physics laws like conservation of momentum and conservation of energy to find this out. In this experiment, we're going to be using a ballistic pendulum. If you don't know what that looks like, here it is. Most of the time, it's used to measure how fast a bullet is firing out of a gun, but we're using it for a serve. So instead of coming out of a gun, I'm gonna be launching a tennis ball off of my racket into a box that traps it and then swings along the string. Here is the design. As you see, I serve a tennis ball into the contraption. It catches the ball and swings back and forth. Right now, by using a ballistic pendulum, we are limiting sources of error because there is no friction, direct friction, and also it's not a windy day, so air resistance is negligible as well. Explaining how to find the speed from a ballistic pendulum will come later, but we need a lot of numbers to do so. To execute the calculations in our analysis to find the initial velocity of the tennis serve, we're going to need first the mass of the cardboard box that is going to trap the tennis ball, which we made here. We're going to need the mass of the tennis ball. And keep in mind that both of these were measured at the electronic balances at school to limit sources of error. I could have just looked it up on Google, but obviously that's not very reliable. Next, we'll need the length of the ballistic pendulum string in meters. Then we'll need the angle of the string that swung, or the box that swung in the ballistic pendulum. To do this, we'll use an online protractor as it started at 90 degrees straight down, we can then zoom in and line up a protractor right to the origin of the top. And then we can see that it moved about to 140 degrees from 90 degrees. So if you subtract the two, you get 50 degrees of movement. We'll need the initial velocity of the contraption, which is zero meters per second because it is starting at rest. This leaves us with two more spots on the data table. One is the final velocity of the contraption and ball, and through our angle of swing, we can find that. And then finally, the initial velocity of tennis ball, or how fast I serve. With all of those calculations and observations, we have organized this into one complete data table. So now that we've gathered all of our data, we need to analyze it and find the speed of my serve through multiple physics calculations. So we start by converting the data that we got into workable numbers. Starting with the mass of the box, the scale read 334.8 grams, and we convert that to kilograms, and we get 0.3348 kilograms. Same with the ball, we were given 55.8 grams, and we convert it to 0 0.0555 kilograms. And the length of the string was in inches at 118.5 inches, we need to convert that to meters and we get 3.099 meters. Now the first step in our calculation is finding the final velocity of the box and the ball together. Because remember, this is a perfectly inelastic collision because both of the balls became one after the ball was hit, both the box and the ball. So here's the contraption we made here. This is where the ball, the box initially was. I hit the tennis ball into the box and it swung 50 degrees according to our online protractor. So what we need to find is the Y value, the height it raised. From that, we can use conservation of momentum and conservation of energy to find the initial velocity. So we see that cosine of this angle, cosine of 50 is equal to adjacent, which is this, over hypotenuse, which is 3.099 minus Y. And we get the y value to equal 3.099 minus 3.099 times cosine of 50. And we get a final y value of 1.075 meters. We can use that to find the final velocity of the boxing ball, which we will later use in our conservation of momentum equation. Since we know that kinetic energy is equal to potential energy, we can write out the equation and set it up like this. 
Uh, this is for the box and ball contraption, by the way. So we can plug in our numbers here. We don't know any of the numbers for the kinetic energy, but we do know the gravitation constant and the Y value that we just calculated. We can then cancel out the M values because they're going to stay the same. And we get one half V squared equals 9.8 times 1.075. Calculate that out and we get the V squared or the v, VF, which is right here, to be 4.59 meters per second. Then we can finally find the initial velocity of the tennis ball or how fast I served. Using the conservation of momentum equation, M1V1 plus M2V2 equals M1 plus M2 times velocity final, because this is a perfect inelastic, perfectly inelastic collision, we can use this side of the equation. We plug in all our numbers, the mass of the tennis ball, the mass of the box. We don't know the velocity of the tennis ball. That's what we're trying to find. The initial velocity of the box, the two masses added up, and the velocity final. As you can see, the this value becomes zero because the box was initially at rest. And then we can calculate for V initial, which is 32 meters per second. But that doesn't make any sense in our eyes. Let's put some reference into it. So let's convert meters per second into measurable units. First, kilometers per hour, which is usually how any metric system, car or ball speed, any of that is measured. So after we convert it to kilometers and hours, we get 115.2 kilometers per hour. And now since we're in the USA, we'll also convert it to miles per hour. And we get 71 miles per hour. Now to compare that to other professional serves, we got Roger Federer, very well known. As you can see, his serve was 115 miles an hour, but he's pretty old right now, and that's not even the fastest. Fastest ever recorded serve on Wimbledon was 147 miles per hour, so two times faster than my serve. So we finally figured out how fast my serve was, and I know one thing, it's got to get a lot more better.